Growing up, most of us were taught that gambling is bad. It's this horrible thing. You're gonna lose money. The house always wins long term. And in general, that's true, right? You think about most forms of gambling like slots, like roulette. Those are completely chance games. It's impossible to make money. You've never seen a pro slots player, a pro roulette player. You can't make money doing certain forms of gambling. It is rigged against you. But at the end of the day, gambling just means risking capital for an expected return. So you think about investing, right? You think about Warren Buffett. What did this guy do at the end of the day? He was betting on companies to be successful. And I'd say he had a pretty good career doing it. So gambling just means risking capital for an expected return. And there are absolutely forms of gambling where you can actually get an edge and make money long term, such as poker, such as investing, and also sports betting, which we're gonna be talking about in this video. How do you need to think as a sports better to actually win long term, get an edge and beat the books? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about profitable sports betting. And I love sports, I love gambling. I actually started out my career, I was a trader on Wall Street. So I'd go into work, I would bet in financial markets, and then I would get home from work and I would bet on sports, but now I do this full time. And last year I made over $160,000 sports betting. And I mean, seriously, anyone can do this. You don't need a fancy college degree. All you need to do is put in the time to learn, okay? You need to learn about the profitable betting strategies, how sports books work, and how you can actually, like, actually get an edge and beat the books long term. So, the reason that sports betting, the reason that it's possible to make a lot of money is the market is super fragmented or inefficient, however you want to think about it. So, you think about the price of a stock, there's one price. Right? If you go to Fidelity, if you go to E-Trade, if you go to Robinhood, you're gonna see the same price for the stock. Maybe there's slightly different fees, but the market is efficient. Whereas you think about sports betting, the market is super fragmented. There's hundreds of sports books in the United States. There's tons in Canada, all these other countries, and all these books set their own odds, right? So for example, if you take a look at Garland over four and a half assists, Flip has this priced at minus 105. That means betting $105 to win 100 in profit. If you look at a different sports book, it's minus 147. So you have to bet 147 to win 100 in profit. So for the exact same bet, this is the exact same bet. If Garland gets five or more assists, it'll win. You have extremely different prices, 105 on one book and 147 on a different book. It's absolutely crazy, right? Imagine being a day trader and going to E-Trade and seeing the price of Facebook at $500 and on Fidelity, it's $400. It'd be really easy to be a day trader if the market were that fragmented, but that's not the case in the stock market. It's only the case in the sports betting market where all these books are running around, they all wanna be unique, they're all setting their own odds, and that ultimately is why there's a lot of opportunity for us as sports bettors. So if you wanna make money sports betting, you have to understand markets, and that's the first thing we're gonna discuss. So we'll start with the stock market. It's very applicable to sports betting. So as a simple example, very simple example, Facebook stock was $395 on Friday. It popped to $475, so the stock went up 20%. Right, and long story short, why did that happen? Well, Facebook had an earnings report. They made a lot more money than people were expecting. So the stock went up a lot. The stock went up 20% because the market is pricing in that Facebook is making a lot more money than they initially expected. So the stock price has to go up. Long story short, what's important about this is everything is baked into the market, right? All public information should be baked into the price that Facebook is currently trading at. There's millions of investors who wake up every single day and they determine, they try to determine, is Facebook a buy or is it a sell? You have hedge funds running these sophisticated models. You have trading firms, all sorts of people. You have normal people on Reddit waking up every day trying to determine is Facebook a buy or should we sell? Is it overvalued or is it undervalued? And the price where Facebook currently is, 474 bucks and 99 cents, is where supply and demand meet right? That's called fair value. Facebook is currently fair 
the fair price is $474.99. That's where supply and demand meet given all available information. So a couple weeks ago, the market didn't know that Facebook was making that much money, right? So the price was lower. The price of Facebook was like 394 bucks. But now the market has new information that Facebook absolutely crushed it. They made a ton of money. So the price is higher. That's reflected in the market. So what makes sports betting so profitable and why I love it so much is the market is super fragmented, inefficient. You have hundreds of different books all setting prices on the exact same bet, right? You think about Facebook, there's one price for Facebook. It's $474.99 or whatever it was but it's different in sports betting. All books set their own odds, all books set their own prices. So for example, imagine we could go back in time a week and buy Facebook at 395 bucks. Obviously we would do that. That would be a no brainer, right? We know Facebook had a great earnings report. There's new information in the market. They made way more money than expected. The current price is 475. So if we could go back in time, to when it was like 375 or 395, whatever it was, we would absolutely wanna buy that. That would be a great bet because there's new information in the market that Facebook made a ton of money and the stock should be worth more. That's essentially what you're getting in sports betting, right? That's literally what you're getting is all these books set their own odds and sometimes books are stale to line movements. So in this Garland example, what you'll notice is Fliff is the only sports book, this one sports book. They're the only book with Garland's under favored. They have his under favored minus 155. His under is the favored outcome. Every other sports book, you have Bet Online, a pretty sharp sports book. All these other books have ripped Garland, moved Garland to being favored to go over. The market has moved. You can see in these line movement charts that Garland has moved to being a pretty heavy favorite to go over four and a half assists. Fliff is stale, right? They still have his under favored. And then we have hundreds of other betting markets, other sports books who have moved Garland to being a heavy favorite to go over. So all of these other sports books Right, all of these books have sophisticated models. I mean, you think about FanDuel, that's a billion dollar company, a multi-billion dollar company. They have sophisticated models. All these books are taking bets, moving lines around based on where action's coming in. And aside from Fliff, they've all moved Garland to being a heavy favorite to go over four and a half assists. So essentially we have the opportunity to get a great price, right? It's just like buying Facebook at $385. We're able to buy Garland's over at a discount on Fliff because they're late to the line movement. They haven't adjusted yet. And this is all possible because the market's super fragmented. All sports books want to set their own odds. So the best advice I ever got when I started sports betting is just treat it like trading a stock. You know, on Fliff, we're able to buy Garland's over at minus 105 odds, or let's say 105 bucks, right? Minus 105, betting 105 to win 100 profit. We're able to buy it at 105. The rest of the market has ripped higher, and that may be because of lineup changes, sharp action coming in, betting volume, all the sharper customers have started to take his over, so books have moved lines towards his over. But the rest of the market has them around, you know, minus 140, a 140 favorite. So we're able to buy something at 105 that's trading in the market at 140. And that's the power of sports betting, right? Is you're able to capitalize on this fractured, inefficient market and find profitable plays. And that's exactly how you need to think if you want to make money sports betting.